All right, y'all, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, the sun is coming up at the shop this morning. I came in early because I haven't had time to work on my car this week. Today is actually Wednesday. Had planned to stay late last night, work on it. Instead, I was fighting that early Chevrolet on the dyno. I guess I kind of shot myself in the foot because I predicted that sometimes, you know, dyno videos are really hard. I didn't video it, didn't plan to video it, but ended up chasing a few different little problems. Got some things that don't make any sense. And I'm the kind of person that when I get presented with a problem, I can't get my head out of it until I fix it. But I finally went home last night at like one o'clock in the morning, back in here this morning at seven o'clock, because I'm gonna put some bars in the cutlass. But let's get to it. All right, so before we get out into the shop working on the Cutlass, I wanted to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is a service that protects your internet connection and your privacy online. It's super easy to use, and I've got it set up as a, where it automatically comes on on my computer, but I'll show you guys just how easy it is to turn on, like if you're traveling a lot, like you guys might remember not too long ago, we were on sick week, bouncing around to all kinds of different Wi-Fi's at different hotels, even going down the road, I was on my, you know, I was remoting in through my, uh, my cell phone provider and just having NordVPN to protect and hide me really from the rest of the internet is something that I really appreciate. So to turn it on, click on the little arrow here. I said, normally this pops up and happens already on my computer, but just one click connects me to the nearest server. So with just that one click, now I am connected to the nearest network, which happens to be down in Miami. And you might be wondering, yeah, what's that really do? Well, let's show you guys something. We're gonna go connect to Australia. And to show you that the, uh, the internet now thinks I am somewhere over in Australia, We'll open up our browser here. We're going to go to weather.com. Just weather.com. And you can already tell by the website and stuff. It thinks I'm over in Australia. I wish I was in Australia. I'm going to try to get over there at some point. So you Aussie fans, thank you all for watching. And yeah, I want to make it over there. Maybe for summer nats, maybe for another event, but got to make it over there anyways so along with being able to jump around and hide myself all over the internet and see maybe what's some local news in Australia or England or one of the other 5,500 locations that or 5,500 servers that NordVPN uses Nord also has an advanced anti-mal malware feature that can protect you from all sorts of annoying emails and phone calls where people are trying to get your information basically to annoy you. I don't have time to deal with all that stuff anyway, like spam phone calls and all that nonsense. So NordVPN really helps me with all of that. So if you ever do have any issues with NordVPN, they have 24 seven customer support and a 30 day money back guarantee for all users. If you are interested in getting in on the NordVPN service, you can get a free extra four months when you sign up for a two year plan using our code that's on the bottom of the screen, hopefully by now, as well as in the link in the description down below. So huge thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this episode as well as protecting me on the internet. Back out in the shop. All right, so as a reminder to everybody, if you're new to the channel, uh, we are doing a 25.3 SFI spec roll cage in my 78 Cutlass. This is my first car. Got it when I was, I think, 14 years old, 15 years old, but drove it to high school, 
And yeah, there's not a whole lot of it left, but you know what? I drove that to high school and I like that. Never got rid of it, held on to it for a long time. My dad and I bought it for 200 bucks from a friend of his that he worked with. Somebody you may see on the channel eventually. He was on the channel once, I think. But anyways, we may be doing a little bit of work for him on, ironically enough, another 63 Nova. Because apparently that's just the car we built a lot of. Because we've got another one in the pipeline after that one. But anyways, 25.3. This is what the floor section looks like. So today... You know, basically we have the perimeter red bars installed as well as the inner frame rails, the yellow bars there. And today I want to get all of the blue bars made. So those blue bars need to be inch and a quarter by 058. And I do need to also do this bar. I plan on doing it maybe at a bit of an angle so that it lines up and is coincident with the 6C bar that will become uh, the transmission cross member. So to find out where that bar needs to go, I need to measure where the transmission mount is gonna end up. And that means that I've kinda gotta do a little bit of guesstimation because the body's not on the frame. So I've got to do some guesstimation again to figure out where the back of the engine can be and then where that puts the transmission because the back of the engine, I've got to basically measure the back of the engine to the firewall there. Make sure that I clear that with the back of the engine because the driver's side is the, uh, and actually the driver's side head is further ahead. so. Anyways, we'll take some measurements on all that. I'll put the engine just slightly ahead of that with my rough measurements. Add a quarter of an inch for the mid plate and then measure from the transmission bell housing back to the transmission mount. And then the idea is we'll then measure from the body mount hole, kind of like we did in the other one I'll pull forward and figure out where the transmission cross member is gonna end up. And then we can put the transmission cross member in, and then we will do a diagonal in inch and five eighths, which means I need to go ahead and wrap, wrap these welds before I do those in because I'm gonna land it where it is right in the corner and kind of show you guys how I do some of my notching and stuff today. So today I plan on doing more real-time stuff. There'll be some time-lapse, but it's kind of time-lapse heavy in the last video, mostly because it didn't really have the time to edit much else. I'm trying to get some work in on this thing, get it done, keep progressing forward. I'm trying to nibble at it a little bit every week because I figure like that's the way I'm gonna get this thing done. And got some other big news yesterday of a project we're going to be a big part of and for this week this is my last day in the shop this week because tomorrow i fly out for an adventure with somebody you guys will recognize hopefully you'll be excited to see him again i think you will be and then saturday we're going ranger racing and i've got to fly back across the whole country to get back to the ranger race on saturday Ooh, it's going to be a long couple of days. But it's time for me to do some measuring. And then I'm going to do that off camera. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to show you guys the where I decide to put things. And then we're going to get to work doing notching. We're going to get to work notching some tubing. Yep. A little bit more raw footage for you guys, too. When I screw up, I'm going to leave it in. Sometimes I cut it out. But most of the goof ups stay in these videos. So, could be that I'm still waking up. I'll admit that. You know. All right. Let's get to work. All right. Well, after some measurements, we basically 
have the most forward part of the firewall about there. And then the back of the engine should be just a little bit behind because of the, you know, where the firewall shape is, it kind of tucks in a little bit to the recessed area. And then from there to where the transmission mount is gonna end up is, is right around 27 inches. And I've got a pretty good bit of leeway. You guys may be wondering why I'm not being super, super precise on this because I am allowed a three inch bend in this center cross member. So if I have to go forward, yes, ideally I would like it to be perfectly straight and then the bolts straight up through it for the transmission mount. And it's gonna be all solid mounted because it's aftermarket case. The chassis is, is gonna be super stiff. So it's gonna be solid mounted. It's the way Soccer Mom's done. It's the way all the really high-end chassis cars we've done are set up. So that's gonna put the transmission mount somewhere in there or where the transmission bolts to the chassis. Our gear vendor is going to hang back here, which means somewhere back in here, we will have a cross member for a drive shaft loop. And I'm hoping that it will end up kind of right in line with where my underfloor seat braces are going to be. So, about time for me to go measure a tube that's going to go there. And then we can decide on the the long diagonal for the inch and a quarter. But first, actually, I need to do some more welding in the corners, at least of this front joint here, and probably that joint back there, so that I can weld the other tube on top of them. All right, enough tube driver, let me get to work. All right, well, I'm all done up, ready to weld. I figured I'd show you guys my settings. 180 on the max amps. Other stuff going on. Not pulsing or anything like that. Uh, it's not flowing right now, but the CFH is set 20 to 22 on the uh, flow. We're using a heavy hitter torch with a large gas lens, a lot of stick out. And a 16th inch, 16th inch filler rod. All right, well, let's weld a little bit. Can I sing? I don't know, if your singing's really good, we might get copyrighted. You know I'm totally putting that in the video, right? happened to the music? All right, over to the other side.
little hot on my finger. You gotta press that, yeah, the ring on there. The running ring? Yep. Uh, wow. So it don't fall off? So much work. That's what it sounds like when you dip the tungsten. Uh, or, you know, I stab the tungsten with the filler rod. Well, you know, a weld is stronger when it has tungsten in it. Tungsten in it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's cool. Yes. All right, well, some of you guys were asking. I thought I would show you how I do some of this stuff as far as figuring out bar angles and how to notch stuff and all that goodness. And it's simple actually, it's just a piece of tape. So kind of put, you know, I've got the center line of the, the transmission cross number is gonna end up there. So if the tube, end of the tube is gonna be wider than where the transmission cross member comes off straight because you know, it's notched at an angle. And then I want it to intersect and land on both of these tubes. Cause I like to have joints that are multiple joints so that when the, a pillar bar lands here you know it's just super strong and had i maybe had i measured this out i might have done this bar with a curve in it or something because the mid plate should be somewhere in here and there's going to be a hoop that goes over and across from one bar to the other that the the mid plate will bolt to and then the transmission and engine bolt together through the mid plate but the other thing I use is a little digital digital protractor deal. Tells you the number on it. And basically all I did here was kind of line it up parallel. And I'm doing it with just my left hand, so that actually looks pretty good right there. And it's 58. Yeah, 58, 59 degrees. And then that means that I'll be notching those in parallel. So notch this tube, roll the tube 180 degrees, notch it to fit this bar, and then clip a little bit off on a 30 degree angle. Well, 31 or 32 degree angle. So that it mates up against this tube as well as that tube. And this is what we end up with. And the block here in the middle is what I use. And this is a part of our Rogue Fab bender, but it works really good for what I'm doing. And there are less expensive ones. Like you can get a, a tube clamp that um, isn't nearly as elaborate as this. But basically it gives you a place to put your level when you're using or when I'm using a notcher like we're using. And because this car is really square, this tube also fits over here 
So you can see nice and tight on that notch there. Nice and tight on how she fits down here. So I'll drill a couple of holes through through the through the tube, both here and through each of those. Actually, I really only need to do one, but that just gives the air that's inside of the tube somewhere to go as it's being heated up. Because if you think about when you're welding to that tube, well, the air inside of the tube is heating up also. And when you get to where it's almost sealed up because you're completely welding the tube all the way around on each end, that air tries to come rushing out through where you are welding and it's not an inert gas anymore. It's actually the outside air. So a lot of jibber jabber to kind of explain the process a little bit, but I'm going to go make a second one of these. And the first one always takes you a little while, but now that I've got, you know, this one, I can go weld the, or go machine the other one. The notcher's already set up and then knock it out real quick. Weld these two in and then move on to the next bar. Well, like normal, you don't ever get as far as you think you're gonna, and pretty much tinkered on this all during the day today, and got five more bars in. So we got one diagonal, two diagonal. The cross member, which is just barely tacked in because it may not be finalized. Like I may have to do one that's bent down, bent backwards, don't know yet. And then I also got these two bars in. I have the two cut for that side. You can see I've got the piece of tape there and I wrote down my dimensions and my numbers. So kind of like I showed y'all in the last thing, basically this bar is gonna be 15 inches long. It's a 50 degree notch on this end. It's a 10 degree notch on this end. And you may have seen in the time-lapse, I don't know when the camera died on the time-lapse, had to come back to it and put a new battery in it but i had a lot of time in notching those bars and those of you with a really sharp eye may see that that bar is offset so this is an inch and a quarter this is an inch and five eighths you may see, notice that this bar is not on center. Well, the idea is that underneath all of the bars is 
perfectly flat. Future plans, we'll see how it all works out, but future plans are, well, future plans call for that to be flat across all the bottom of the bars. I'll let you guys take some guesses as far as what all that means. So, tech tip for you guys. And this goes back to some TIG welding stuff. Get my calipers out of the pocket here. The way I was taught TIG welding is that my weld diameter should be the thickness of the tube onto each side of the joint. Now, it varies a little bit when you're welding, you know, a, a piece to a tube just because of the thicknesses, but the idea is that if you have the width, if you have the thickness of the tube, let's just do numbers. So both of these tubes are 83 thousandths thick. So this weld should be 160 thousandths, possibly a little more so that we know we've got it in. Cause you can go too much and cook this. So it looks like I'm 193-ish there. Down here, it's maybe a little bit thinner in the groove, 173. A little bit wider down there. So down here where there's a bigger kind of valley that you're filling, it's a little bit wider. 193 again, 190-ish, 185, 186. And what you're trying to do when you are TIG welding, like say this is, this is your tungsten. For me, and if you notice here too, I notched this tube so that it's flat to the full thickness of the tube right here. Hopefully this is clear enough that you guys can see it. But I'm going to fill this entire little valley right here in with weld. And then we, because if it flows nice and flat, you know, if you can kind of, let's see if I can get that zoomed in there just right. So if the weld flows off of this tube down into that, well, we know we will have full penetration on this tube and the heat will be enough that it also penetrates nicely into this tube. Hope that looked okay on the, uh, the video there. It's just my GoPro. I need to maybe film some of that stuff, some of this up close stuff with a different camera. We'll get there eventually. But that's gonna wrap it up for today. And uh, I guess probably by the time this video has come out, you guys already know that I've been in Vegas with Drew at the NASCAR truck race. Not sure how the timing of all these videos is gonna work out, but this is supposed to be my Sunday video. And um, I guess in one on one hand, just random thought here, I did one bar, why well, no, I did three bars of the first video on the roll cage side of things, four bars the second, and then five bars in the third video with roll cage. I'd actually hoping, I was hoping it was gonna be seven, but oh well. Anyways, hope you guys had an awesome weekend. And uh, hopefully I did really good in the Ranger race that was Saturday night, the night before this video came out. And uh, that'll be that. See you guys in the next one.